I joined the video game industry in 2000 at a little company called Rare. Uh, my first job was working on a game that, I don't think it was named that at the time, but it was Cameo Elements of Power for the Nintendo GameCube. So yeah, that was quite an exciting time to come straight out of university to get a job at Rare, who were riding high at the time, and then to be put straight on a, a title for the next generation of a Nintendo console. I mean, most of the team were still running on uh, N64 at the time, and we were trying to use some emulators and stuff like that to see what the, the new console was going to be, the Dolphin. And then they started shipping hardware around, and I was surprised that being one of the newest people in the company, I had opportunity to work on serial number number 12 of the Nintendo GameCube um, dev kits and it was kind of really exciting. Um, but yeah, I worked at Rare and Cameo, that then moved to Xbox, I then moved to Perfect Art Zero, and then they both moved to Xbox 360. Um, since then, I, I worked with the Xbox avatars, and then moved to Sony for a little bit, and then Codemasters, and now I'm making Rage Injustice. For me personally, my favourite of all time is Final Fight, for, of the, the, the genre. I mean, I was a big Capcom fan, Street Fighter 2 was amazing at the time, Final Fight was just sublime for the, the brawler. Uh, but obviously, when you look back at the golden age of, of arcade and kind of the 16-bit, there were so many really good brawlers from um, Streets of Rage, of course, has been a huge influence on some of the the kind of moves and style of, of gameplay, uh, but there's a lot of little touches as well from other games. I mean, we've got a little bit of Double Dragon in there, you know, we've got a back elbow because that was the most powerful, stupidly overpowered move in Double Dragon. Not quite as powerful in here, we've, we've nerfed it a little bit, but you know, we felt that that had to be there to classic. Uh, other games, Crime Fighters 2 or Vendetta, Konami game, great game. I think it's Jay, our artist, I think that was one of his all-time favourites at the arcade. One part of the this genre, I think, and games from the time that crosses the ages is the fact that they all pick up and play, that they're, they're kind of instantly fun. There's no hanging around for a learning tutorial a couple of hours before you get into it. It's, they have to hook you up straight away, especially an arcade game. If you put your, your 20p in and you're not enjoying it by the end of that credit, you're not putting another 20p in, no matter what they try and hook you with. So games from that era are very instantly fun and I think the beat em up, I mean, for me it was the pinnacle of that kind of game, but it just has that kind of power and kind of escapism and just the things that you that a lot of people like me play video games for just to feel overpowered superhero or the, the hero that saves the day. As a game, we, we don't expect to win awards, we don't expect to be kind of treated as some kind of high pinnacle thing, but we do think that we're fun. We do believe that we've got something that people pick up, play, and they'll smile. They'll have fun doing it. It'll be a guilty pleasure rather than a, a BAFTA winner or anything silly like that. The Switch is just so good for that, for that co-op experience. It's, being able to play it solo in handheld mode and then just click off your Joy-Cons and play two players straight away in tabletop mode, I think it's cool, is it? Um, just be able to do that, it's great. And this kind of game, again, it comes back to the, the heritage of the arcade, of you're playing it in single player, someone comes along, they put 20p and they join and they play together and it's co-op, there's, there's, there's kind of a bit of camaraderie you get from, possibly even from strangers playing these games. And we hope that we've kind of we've mixed a bit of that into this and with the switch especially you can just play it anywhere and it's drop in drop out co-op there's no oh i've got to quit out and start a new multiplayer game it's you've undocked you've changed the mode of the joy cons done there's two of you playing straight away it's great i'll speak for jay house since he's not here at the moment our artist uh he told me that his idea behind it he loved that back in the day Donkey Kong Country, Killer Instinct, these games in the, the kind of chunky 2D, 3D pre-rendered look, they looked amazing for the time. They were kind of, they were a future that's of sprites that never that never was. So part of his kind of, I think, um, aim was to take the ideas of the time there and imagine that they, they'd just finished Donkey Kong Country and they said, do you know what, we figured out what computer graphics are. This is how games should look. They should look this. And he wanted to take it to, and what would you have now with modern technology, with modern tools and engines and things? How can you take it to its peak? So you've got cloth physics, you've got all the kind of the IK, all the, the fancy things you can do in a 3D model now, but then you render it to a sprite. And for me as a programmer, it's amazing.
I mean, I just have to draw sprites and they look great. We were quite late coming to the Nintendo Switch for our development, but the moment we had the dev kit, I realized that it was a dream to dev for, for me. I mean, the game was up and running within three days. We were playing the game on the Switch within three days of receiving the dev kit. And from then on, I've not really needed a lot of support from Nintendo because the game was mostly complete and the documentation was good enough for me to understand what it was I needed to do for certification and things like that. Last September we realised that the kind of the market changed, shifted a little bit for indie development. For uh, releasing games a few years ago you could probably release a game independently, completely on your own and do quite well out of it. Now it seems that it's a little bit harder, the, the market's grown, there's a lot of uh, great indie games coming out, some are even getting lost and it's a shame. And we just felt that going with a publisher could kind of weight the dice a little bit in our favour. It's still a risk, every video game release is a risk, but we thought that, and when we got the opportunity to speak to 1717, we thanked our lucky stars, I mean, they're such a great, great company. They're full of, you know, really enthusiastic gamers, they know, they know the market, they know how to do games, they've had great success with Nintendo and with Switch and we were just so excited to work with them. What help have they given us? Well, they've, they we got proper QA, rather than just uh, us few de developers on the game, playing the game and trying to find the bugs, we, we went with proper QA, and they found a lot that we wouldn't have picked up on. I mean, it's been great, the game is so much better for it for that. They gave us some uh, usability feedback from some people in their team. Again, the game's been polished even more. We thought we had a pretty polished thing last September, but right now it's, it's just, so much better, you know. And feedback about making the game, seeing if we can increase what we had on the game. So originally we were, um, we were intending for just two players, two playable characters. They suggested a third might make it a more rounded package. I mean, you tended to have three characters to choose from back in the day. It, it, when you think about it that way, you think, well, maybe you were, we were missing something. So we you know, worked quite hard and got a new character, Ashley, in there. And, the game does feel much better for it, having three options, three different styles of playing. So price point is really important for an indie game, it is. I mean, we have struggled with trying to figure out what the right price point is. That's another thing, Team 17, they know. They know how to get price points. They know, you know they've got the right people in the right places that can research and, and pick a good pro point. So yeah, a few days ago we, we started announcing that the price point is £10. Um, and people are some people seem very shocked by that you know some of our long-term followers have been expecting this is going to be you know very premium as a game and i think that it's been well received i think that is what we were hoped for it's a niche game you know the scroll and brawler it's not a mainstream game even on in, in the indie spectrum it's not a mainstream game so to price it at a slightly more impulse buy, something that you don't have to think too much. It's, you know, from my point of view, I look at it, it it's less than a, a crate of beer. <laughs> you know, a couple of friends around, a crate of beer will go in an evening. We've got, I've got a notebook full of ideas that I've not had a chance to do. Little tweaks to huge changes. There's so many things that I could bring to Raiding Justice that, assuming we have enough support, I'll bring as much of it as I can. I mean, the first thing that people ask for is online multiplayer. You know, whether it be um, local multiplayer on your, your Switch or on other devices online, um, that's something that people really want, and I really want it too. After that, we've got loads of ideas of different game modes, extra content, slight tweaks of the content that's there, trying to keep it evolving over time. There's, there's enough to keep me busy. I mean, I, I would love to do a sequel now. I, you'd think that after all the years I've spent making this one beat em up I'd be sick of it, but there, it's just such a fun genre to be in and I would love to make a sequel to it. If not, there are plenty of other genres. I, as a, a kind of a child of the late 80s, early 90s, there are so many games from that era that have fallen by the wayside in some regard and I'd like to do my own little spin on it. If I was mega successful, I'd love to make a, a light gun arcade game. But it's never going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to do a, a sequel. I'd love to do um, another take on another genre, or maybe mix up, you know, a bit of this and a bit of that.